Hey, Tactical Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome back out to the shop. Uh, this week, I've actually been really busy. I've made the most river table pen blanks ever since I introduced them. I had to do eight that I shipped out today, and then I've got one more that I have yet to ship out. And I, that order just came in just two nights ago. So I've got it sitting in my oven. I've already cut the river out of it, and then it's going to be... Uh, sitting at 150 degrees for a little bit until I go out and cast it up. And then it should be out here probably about four days once I get it fully cured, hardened, can sand it, finish it, and then send it out to you. So, but got eight of them out today, and that was quite a few. I had one gentleman that ordered four. Uh, he got two curly koa, uh, with different colors and then two maple burl, uh, with two different colors. And those were fun. And then I also had another two that another person ordered with uh, curly maple. And then another two that came in with uh, more maple burl. And then I was just going through some stuff that I stabilized a while back and found a whole bunch of spalted maple sitting in those bins. So I threw those up on the river table blanks um, available so that you guys can get some spalted maple if you want some. These ones actually have a lot of really nice, beautiful spalting all through them. Really uh, pretty. And then there was one uh, spalted maple burl that I threw in there. And I was going to announce it today in the Shop Talk Tuesday. But as soon as I put it online, it sold that night. And that's the one that I've got to do later this evening. So I was really happy and excited to have that happen. It was obviously you guys are watching that page. Because if that thing sold as soon as I put it up, um, I mean, just within a couple of hours, that means you guys have interest with it in it. So I'm going to be getting more of those posted and out to you guys so that way you can uh, shop and have more variety. Now one of the customers that ordered some of those river table pen blanks, they actually asked me when I was going to be getting more of the calico spalted maple burl blanks in. Uh, you guys might not know, but I've been offering calico spalted maple burl blanks for probably about a year now. And you guys have bought my entire stock of it that I had prepped for uh, selling those. So I did have a few more pieces sitting up on my, my wood shelf. So I did cut some of those up. And if you follow me on Instagram, at Suits Crafting on Instagram, I'll throw the video up here. You guys can check that out. But be sure to follow me on Instagram because you get to see more up-to-date stuff of the things that I have going on. Um, I let you know ahead of time when I'm going to be restocking certain items if I have items coming up like these Calico Spalted Maple Burl Blanks. So check me out on Instagram. Come on by and I'll show you some of my research and development things that I have going on. Some of the ideas that I'm coming up with. I put out votes to see what you guys want to have come out in the shop or available as pen blanks and things. And whenever I can, I, I get out here and I do research and development on some of those pen blanks. And uh, we'll just see what we can come up with together. I, I make stuff that you guys want. And if it's not selling in the shop, then I, uh, I sell it off what I've got. Uh, at a discount and then I don't offer that again because it wasn't something that you guys wanted and then when you guys do have something you want like the mother of pearl blanks these river table blanks and nebula blanks you guys absolutely love those so I've been keeping those in stock and available so you guys can pick them up when you can and then I cast up these two these were just with leftover colors that I had from doing some of those uh, river table blanks this one has I believe it's blue Violet Shift Powder, it has red, and then it has just regular blue in it, and it's pretty neat, and then some black that I had left over. So I mixed all those together, and then threw them in, kind of stirred them up, and then they made for a really cool effect. This one will look really good if you uh, paint your tubes black. So if you want to get a hold of that, come on by and grab my random grab bag. And this one was blue and green blue shift. So this is a, a blue with pearl and then green blue shift. And that'll be in the random grab bag as well. I've been working with one of my customers. He is wanting to do a black wood hybrid pen. So I got some black dye from Curtis over at Turntex LLC. And been doing a lot of testing with it. Trying to find what woods work with it really well. And I've been doing, doing some math. And calculations trying to get these wood blanks as black as possible. Um, my customer really wants black wood, but the problem with using something that actually is black wood, like ebony or or African black wood, is that there's a lot of oils in there. You can't stabilize them, so you can't cast them with a lumalite. Um, he wanted me just to kind of stain them. 
So there's problems with stain and the finishes and stuff that I did not want to get involved with and having to stabilize it, stain it afterward, it won't take the stain. And so you can't stabilize, cast it, stain it because staining it after stabilizing, there's no more pores for the stain to soak into. The wood is sealed. And so that wasn't going to work. And so what we had to do is I had to dye stabilize the wood uh, in black and then cast it in the colors that the guy was wanting. Um, I tried maple. Maple turned out more grayish because maple is such a light colored wood. And I was doing some math wrong. Um, I was reading on his website that while using the dyes, you can run, I think it's two ounces per gallon at max four ounces per gallon. And so I'm measuring out like 600 milliliters at a time. And I was thinking that the two ounces was the max. That was the absolute cutoff. So I was playing it safe with one ounce per gallon and then converting that down to however much 600 milliliters would be. I think it ended up being like five uh, milliliters of dye. And then once I reread that online, I found I can actually use like 17 milliliters to every 600 milliliters of cactus juice. And so it turned out a lot better and instead of maple which is a really light wood um, and then hitting that with the black and turning gray I used buckeye burl which had a lot of black and gray in it already and then hit that with the black dye and it made it even darker because um, the thing to know about cactus juice is that if you're using dyes uh, in the cactus juice your dye is going to interact with the color of the wood so if you're using a yellow wood and you apply a red dye, it's going to turn orange. If you're using a white wood and you add red to it, it's going to turn red, maybe with a shade of pink in it because the white is going to add and mix with the red. Just depends on how much color it absorbs. So a, something like a spalted wood is going to absorb more dye because it's soft and spongy and punky and it absorbs more of the, of the cactus juice. But using... Um, like uh, really dense wood doesn't have a whole lot to absorb with. It's not going to take in as much of the color. And so using the Buckeye Burl, which was already black, and hitting it with black dye made it so that it stayed black and just got darker instead of hitting maple, which is a light wood with black dye, made it gray. So let me show you this here in just a second because I got somebody knocking at the door. Kids had to come out and visit me in the shop. Let me know. It's almost time to go. So I'll wrap this up and make it quick. So this is the block here. And it turned out super black. I love it. There's some stripes in here, like this spot right here, that just won't absorb dye. That happens sometimes, you know. It just kind of depends on the wood. Really dense sections, especially like the burl eyes, will not absorb resin. They won't absorb the cactus juice because they're just too dense. They'll take in some of it and stabilize, but the dye won't actually change the color because they're just too dense. There's no air pockets in there for it to absorb into. But this thing turned out amazing. These are so dark. And they started out, you know, with the black and gray. Uh, like I was talking about, you know, it's Buckeye Burl. It's, it's white with graying areas and black areas. And it looks really awesome as it is but then it takes dye really well too and so this just turned out absolutely amazing so that's with some ca finish applied super dark absolutely love it and here's a couple of the pieces without the ca finish applied i put the ca finish on there to show my customer and I mean, you can see that these are black i mean these are a little little dusty but they are black look really nice really happy with how those turned out. I'm really hoping that he likes how they turned out because, well, to be honest, if this isn't as black as he wants it, then I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> it might come down that I actually just make a casting of a burl because he really wants a live edge. And so it might just come down that I do a false burl. So you take silicone, you cast the burl piece that you want, and then you fill that in with resin, and I'll just do a black resin, like a coal black, like Pearl X powder to give it just some depth and, and uh, vibrance to it. And then cast the front edge with the black purple swirl that he's wanting, and we'll just go from there, because I won't be able to make that wood any darker. So you might remember this blank from a couple of weeks ago. I showed these off. There was two of these, and one of them I turned into a pen. So I figured I'd show you that. These are uh, electric blue dyed uh, bolted maple burl 
with some uh, cobalt blue that I filled in in the middle. And I decided to make a pen out of it. I made a Devon click pen with gold and gunmetal. I was originally going to do chrome with this, but I decided to go with the gold and gunmetal because of the fact that this wood turned out to be so dark. Um, I really wanted to accent off the blue resin in the middle and check out how that turned out. Absolutely a gorgeous pen. Really happy with how that turned out. Trying to get the camera to focus here. Really, really nice. So those turned out sweet. And I know that it's a nice pen. Because as soon as I took it in the house, I went, Hey, honey, check out the new pen that I made. She goes, Oh, thanks, mine. It's like, no! I made that one for me! <laughs> so I know that if my wife wants to steal it, then it's a nice pen. And I'm, I'm really liking the Devon click design, the mechanism here. Um, it's got a nice click to it for all of you clickers out there. It's got a really nice click mechanism to it. It's really tactile. Um, it clicks really smooth and I haven't had it fail, which is what I love that it doesn't have a high failure rate because some click pens, you know, you have to hit them all the way down in order to get the mechanism to activate and you can half hit this one and it'll still click. I like the design because it really shows off the wood and resin and whatever artwork you want to do. There's a lot of space here for a beautiful piece of wood. And then it's just really simple. And because it's hollow all the way through here, the top piece isn't large like you have on a Sierra kit. There's a lot of metal up top. And the bottom piece is fairly minimalist. And so it's super hollow and it is light. Um, but it's thicker. A lot of people like the slimline pens because they're lightweight. And these are lightweight without giving up the thickness. And I like a thicker pen, but the lighter weight is nice because then you don't get as fatigued. And this thing is sweet. I love it. So I'm going to start carrying these in my shop. I got to get some inventory because all I have left is the chrome one after I use this one. So I'm going to do something nice with the chrome one. I haven't decided what yet in order to get some stock photos. Probably sell it off or let my wife steal it. And, uh, and then we'll go from there because these are sweet. Absolutely love this pen. And it's going back in my pocket before she comes out and sneaks away with it. So I had an idea uh, last week. I cast up this blank here. And you can see that it's just entirely too thin to make a full pen blank out of. Maybe a slim line. That's about all it fit. So I can't toss it in my... Um, my grab bag because of the fact that it's just too thin. Same with this one. It's a nice green color. Really like it, but it's just entirely too thin. And so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them down to seven and eighths inch sections and then I'll drill a small hole and run a dowel through there and then just kind of stack them up over top of each other and make like a segmented blanket. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. I might just have to do some up so you guys can see kind of what it comes up with. I've got a few Nebula blanks that I just had little leftover resin with and they came out really thin like this green one. And I might just have to get creative and just start cutting sections up and just putting them together and stacking them up onto a dowel so that way you can um, drill the dowel out to whatever size pen you want. And then you'll have yourself a nice segmented blank. These pieces won't go to waste. My dad used to do these with all of his wood cut off pieces and he called them his hippie pens. And he actually sold more hippie pens at bazaars and conventions than he did any of his other pens. Because people like the recycled aspect of it. They like the fact that he's not letting anything go to waste. And I don't want to let any resin go to waste. And so I'm thinking I'm going to do the same thing with some of these uh, off cut pieces. And I also have pieces that as I'm making pens or as I'm making the river table blanks, you know, I cast them five and a half inches long and there's always a section off the end. That's nothing but resin. There's no wood there. And I always have to cut that off. And so those I might be able to throw into a segmented blank as well. So it might just be fun to just to kind of mix and match and you guys can pick them up. It'll be fun. So that's it for this week. Got to get to a scout meeting. It is the anniversary of Boy Scouting. And so we're going to be heading off to a red and green uh, tonight. And so... This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out. Be sure to check out some of my other videos. Subscribe down below if you aren't already, and I will see you next time. Happy turning.